Hi folks, we need to take this chunk of aluminum and turn it into this part. It's a, you know, 2.6 inch square servo housing for motor, but there's some pretty tight tolerances here. And I've been thinking a lot about how to do this correctly. So how do we do the right setups and how do we make these big deep holes, a couple of actually narrow diameters as well and hold good tolerances. So let's take a closer look at both the fusion, but also just kind of the mindset and approach and how we do the order operations. Then let's make some chips. We're actually gonna measure it up too. I got a new uh, height gauge, so we'll see what we come up with and if we can pull this off. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So here's our part. This big hole through the middle. I'm trying to hold two thousandths, and it's uh, and it's really clearance. But I, you know, let's let's do a good job. And it's slightly over fifty millimeters, which ends up being one point nine six eight or so inches. So let's do this. We're gonna go cut off piece of, of stock. By the way, that piece I was holding up was two point seven five. So we've got a little bit of extra on all four sides. We're going to spot our hot top holes. Spot the center with a center drill. You'll see why in a minute. That's gonna be really important. Drill with a letter B undersized as far down in those as that drill will go. So about halfway. And then we'll adapt about the counter bores, clean them up. And then we'll take a really long drill and poke through, still undersized. Then, do I have that in here? Okay, we gotta uh, drill those for 1032s. On these long holes, what I like to do is drill them, uh, even when we go with the deep, let's see here, 116, all the way through, still drill them one size under, and then I'll come through with one final operation, maybe by hand, I don't think about that. We'll see how it goes. And do the final diameter, that way you're not, it gives you a better hole finish, I think. And then do some edge breaks. When we're done, after we get the hole through the middle, which I'll come back to, we'll do the side work here where we'll deck these off uh, and spot and drill this guy for a, uh, I think that gets tapped quarter 20. Now, a couple of interesting things. First of all, the customer sent this model to us with modeled threads, which we don't like, and it's not particularly helpful. So I already deleted one here, but I wanted to show you guys. So cool. Hop back into the model. <laughs> Just click, watch this. Just click on it. Delete. Amazing. So now in cam, here we go. Now here we go. Select same diameter picks the rest of those up. And on this side hole, this is kind of something I thought that was cool and interesting. I like this section view plugin that lets me switch down here quickly to wireframe. This is a very slightly protruding through hole that again gets tapped. And so we've got to be conscious of our drill depth, more so than I frankly normally have to be. So how do we set that correctly? The normal way to do this would, I would just pick that hole and heights of whole bottom. But take a look, when we go into simulation, I've got the show points on and that shows me the bottom point. So the bottom point is driving the tip of that drill down to the bottom of the face that we selected. So I, I'd never tried this before, but in Fusion, if you also click here, it's two faces, but it recognizes what you're trying to do, that it's actually one hole. And not only does it extend that drill down, but if we look at the simulation, click on that point, you'll see it's driving that drill tip correctly down, which is awesome. The drill's undersized because I think he modeled it as a quarter inch, but it's actually gonna be a 201 because we'll tap it a uh, quarter 20. So how do we poke this hole through? It's just too long for an end mill, and I actually don't have any boring bar heads. I don't even have an end mill to rough it out, nor do I have boring bars for my boring head that would do it, so we're gonna do it in the lathe. So that's why we're drilling this center drill here. So we're gonna use that center drill to locate center in a four jaw with a square part, and then we're going to use a drill and then a boring bar in the lathe to, to try to get this out and sneak up on that diameter. Let's go make some chips. Deeper your edge, stick it in here, grab a one, two, three, and then you grow a third hand so that you can do this all at once. I'm trying to keep it square. And you can usually feel if there's rock. Well, now let's test it. Now this is a tenths indicator, so <laughs> sensitive is an understatement. I'm not touching the back though. I'm not touching anywhere yet. Here, 
think I might I gotta adjust the needle, fortunately. Come off, come back on, and intense, let's jog up. I can't see because of the cameras. So we're on two at sort of the three o'clock position, and let's jog up. So that's a foul. So the pressure is decreasing, right, toward the top. Uh, so very carefully, see if we can tram this in. Remember, these are tenths, so that's still a, that's only a thou. We can do better, but it looks a lot. It would look a lot better if we had a normal thou indicator. That may have been too much. Amazing though, like the world we live in, where you know, for a hundred, I think it's like a hundred and twenty dollar, hundred thirty dollar indicator. Amazing, the level of precision and accuracy. And then if you just know how to use it, sweet. I'm gonna call that good. Looks like only a couple tenths run out across the whole face. Now let's snug it down and see if it bumps it. We'll check it again. Awesome. Yeah, it moves a couple tenths at the end. That's good though. I'm okay with that. Face it off, just by hand, just jog it over. So let's actually come at it the same direction both ways because there is a slight amount of tram air in this machine and let's try to take that out. Cool. I used just a machinist square to check the level or squareness and I wasn't happy with it. So I thought, well, okay, I retrammed it in this way and let's just walk across this face. Now you'll see there's, I do have some run out. That's all pretty good. Actually, this is looking pretty good. Maybe it was in the Y. Okay, so I'd saw that's no run out. But if we go this way, yeah, so that's about half. It is half a thou. Across an inch and a half though, so really that's not bad. But it's gonna creep back this way to the total of about, if we stop there, a thousandth of an inch. So at a minimum, I at least wanna know what's going on. So why is that happening? It's probably the head knot. So I fortunately need to retram this machine. Is this a Tormach problem? I would say no, it's actually funny. We had the same thing with our Haas where we've been measuring the run out because when we're working on these big pieces, I just kind of thought you buy this machine and it's just dead perfect. It ends up it's not. The floor moves, the floor sags, the machine stresses when you drive a forklift. You can put an indicator on the table, drive a forklift in front of it and watch it move. So you gotta measure, you gotta know. This again goes back to that Richard King scraping class. Make no assumptions. Measure stuff, be smart about it. Let's face the other side, square, perpendicular, and to the 3.3 dimension. So I've got my Heimer. We're gonna find the bottom of our jaw frame without crashing our Heimer. And in Pathpilot for tool 99, which is my Heimer, I'm gonna type negative 3.3, enter, which sets the height we're at right now as negative 3.3. Make sure we don't have any chips on our part carefully. Slide this in. Tighten her down. And you know what? Let's check it. I'm gonna check it offline. I'm gonna sweep that face, see how she looks. Anybody catch my mistake? <laughs> Try to be smart. I extended the Superfly, which was smart because then I'm making that whole face in one pass. That's definitely the right thing to do. The wrong thing to do is to forget to remeasure. Is to forget to remeasure. We now have a block that is too short. Be right back. Okay, it actually gave me a chance to remember to use chuck, uh, outside screw balls, balls. So I just loosened the vise here, pulled out. These have a ground flat, and this is like Machinist 101, squaring up a block. Not as easy as it looks. You should be able to do it though, and hey, you know what? Let's have some fun here. So, famous last words. I think I got it. We certainly have a good service finish. I like that. Let's go measure it up. Only thing I will mention is that I don't know that my plate is actually good, or calibrated rather, so that's my excuse. We'll see how close we are though. Push the down button, automatically measures. 
3.2993, so 7 tenths under on that corner. This is our new Mitsutoyu uh, height gauge, which we've got for some jobs that we're running on the Haas. Um, well, we have a video record on it, I just haven't edited it yet. So 7 tenths under, oh, spot on, <laughs> yes. Two tenths over, sweet. Oh, this is a relief, please be good. Four, two, oh my God, two tenths under, yes. Oh, that's awesome. Now let's make some chips. Shout out to ABOM79. Adam, thanks for this trick, buddy. This worked awesome. So by drilling that center hole, I now have a dead center suspended between the center hole of my part and a live center, and that lets me rotate this, and I just dial in this dead center, which is awesome, and I've got a second indicator on the face, and you can see we've got a little bit of run out on the face, maybe two th thou and a half, two thou, but the dead center is, you know, within a couple tenths. So how cool is that? I was planning on drilling a hole and then reaming it and using that reamed hole to dial it in, but this, something really elegant about this. So again, thanks Adam. Next up, hole time. I'm a big baby, so I'm gonna poke through first with a quarter inch drill, then a half inch, then a one inch, then a one and three eighths inch. Then we'll start boring her. Ends up that last one was made in China. Let's do a New York reload, just grab a different one. It's actually, actually only one and a quarter, so we'll just do a little bit more boring, if this works. Okay, drilling done. I don't do that a lot. You, you use big drills, but what okay, except for that Chinese drill. Now, bore it out. Am I missing something though? Is there a better way to have done this? I spent some time thinking about it. I just don't have long end mills and you've got to get a hole through there before you bore it. And I thought about doing it in the mill. I'm curious to see what you guys think. So, so far, I'm happy with this. I've got, shoot, I can't remember what that is. I think it's a CNMG 332 maybe uh, set up. We should be okay. Let's see how she runs actually. We've got a little bit of a step in there when we switch drills. Give it a quick try. All right, let's just try to clean up that ID board, get a measurement, see how we're doing. I got a stop set up. Uh, that way we don't go through and hit the backside of this chuck. Uh, well, that looks great. We'll see if it hits, gets a little rougher when it steps because we uh, step that drill down. I no joke would, would be using the Tormach. Well, would I use the Tormach lathe? I mean, yes, because it's faster, and uh, I like I like the CNC side. We had, we actually got a setup for some hex parts right now for the clamps, and uh, I'm trying to think, you know, it would have worked. I don't it, know if it would have handled those twist drills. No, it should have handled those twist drills. I don't have a Morse taper though. There you go. That's a reason not to. Sweet. Not every day you see uh, NYC CNC running the manual lane, right? So let's walk this thing out to the 197. Here's the funny thing, folks. I'm really enjoying this, but it kind of reminds me of like of our chip break series and about being a good entrepreneur. I'm really good at Fusion 360 and I'm really good at running CNC mills. Manual lays, I like the challenge and I'd like to say I can do them and I will get this done, but I'm at the point, unfortunately, where I've got to kind of just say, hey, stick to what you're really good at. All right, we'll uh, walk this thing out, make sure we try to take enough depth of cut to activate the chip breaker and get this bore to size.
almost done. Last thing, you ever drill a hole through and you get that little burr on the inside wall? Link in the video description, relatively inexpensive but priceless Noga deburring tool that lets you poke a tool in and deburr an IV hole. Boom, now let's measure it up. I think I goofed. So I'm pretty confident in the number right here on our board diameter of 1.97. I think there's too much run out back here though. Uh, well, let's just try it out. We push this inside diameter button. It comes down, it beeps. Now you carefully push it across and it's finding the low spot. It'll beep when it comes back up high enough to say we're done. It comes up, finds the top. Awesome, two, three tenths over. I like that. Here's the problem. Backside. Six point seven thou. The tolerance is plus five thou, so we are outside the tolerance. The height should be good for fun. We check our four corners here. Four tenths. <laughs> One tenth. Eight tenths. Ooh. One thou. Oh, uh, well, a couple tenths more. So about a thou run out across the face. So a win in many respects, like I'm happy. This is a cool looking part. The bore finish is phenomenal, but we blew the tolerance. End of conversation, like that doesn't work. So bummer, I should have been able to fix that. When we had the telescoping gauges in there as back as I could, I was getting like three thou, which was way within it. So my fault, I don't do this type of work a lot, not a good excuse, but I think it's probably more the physical lathe run out. Again, not an excuse, but I gotta either fix that in the lathe or know that if I do boring like that, I've got to figure out how to compensate. So lesson learned, folks. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned. Take care, see you soon.